It's like I'm on the porch, actually. Aww. <laughs> yeah, you're more on the porch than we are. That makes one of us. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode, another season finale what? of On the Porch with From Porch Music. I can't believe we're at our second season finale. I know, we've done like, what, 40 some episodes, 44 episodes of this thing? Yeah. Yikes. That's so wild. That's thanks a lot for, of you. Thanks for, wow. <laughs> thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for listening. Thanks to our guests for hanging out with us and sharing a little bit more about themselves with the country music community. We love, we love this. It's been a wild two years. Thank you so much for listening. We really appreciate it. Um, thanks for joining us on the ride and joining us on the porch every two weeks. And uh, we're really excited uh, to keep this going in the new year um, for season Stay three. Stay tuned for season three. But before we get to season three. We are so excited to close out season two with none other than Dallas Smith. He's a multi-CCMA award winner. He's a fantastic staple of Canadian country music and Canadian rock music. And he uh, has a brand new album out now called Dallas Smith. And uh, it, was, it was a great chat. So for the last time, Jenna, last time this season. Okay, we are hanging out on the porch for the season finale with Dallas Smith. Dallas, how are you doing? Welcome. Doing fantastic. Doing fantastic. Record just came out a little while ago, and uh, it's just that's my favorite part is watching fans and you know pick what songs they like and which ones they you know initially love the most. And yeah, it's, there's a discovery process of uh, having a record out. It's really really fun. Yeah, it's been a couple of years, so I'm sure that's something you've been uh, waiting for just to get back to that. Yeah, the last record was. 2020, I think Timeless came out in that. So yeah, it's, it's been a minute. And we haven't really had to do a, we didn't really get to do a proper record release because we released it during COVID. So yeah, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. This is a welcome, a welcome change. I mean, speaking of, like not to get into that world, but it was such a, like, it was so nice to have new music from a bunch of artists during COVID or during that time, because as we all know, it was such a crappy time that just having some kind of music was so nice, especially yeah. new music. Yep. Yeah, I hear you for sure. So Dallas, you're joining us from a literal park bench. Um, you're on more of a porch than we are, so that's fun. Thanks. <laughs> Before we get too deep in, why don't we um, introduce you to, you, we haven't had you on the porch. We have featured you on our site a few times, um, yep. but we know you're from Langley, BC. You're currently hanging out from Franklin, Tennessee, however, because you're quite back and forth, but um why don't you tell us how you got into music a little bit just the yeah well that's, this would be a long segment i think so i grew up in a household where music was around uh around lots there was lots of singing involved my dad played guitar and sang i was more of like a he was, he was more introverted i think with it um i saw it a bit but not a lot uh, he would I, i'd hear him playing in his in his room and stuff like that occasionally and, and catch that but my mom, my mom was in a uh, women's professional choir so she was in sweet adeline's and so from I was a kid, it was just singing was everywhere. My All my aunts were in um, the choir as well. And, you know, my parents would have parties and my, my aunts and my mom would be sitting there uh, harmonizing to Beatles records. And it was just always around, right? And uh, my mom would be sitting there doing warm-up scales and asking me if, I, if her pitch was good. And I was like seven or eight, nine years old, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it was it was, uh, it was a good household in that way. And... Um, but I, I never really, like, I, I stopped singing in front of people when I was really young. I just you know, shy and, you know, I just introverted like that. And um, I carried that on all the way through high school. But, you know, when um, the Seattle scene happened and you know, I started really gravitating towards, like, my own music outside of, like, the Beatles and Zeppelin and stuff that I was exposed to as a kid, um, my outlet after school would be I'd have, like, an hour and a half, an hour, where I'd sit there and I'd just watch, I'd play video games. And I'd listen to my favorite records and just sing along, right? Was, that was my outlet and my, my way of venting and um, escapism sort of deal. And, uh, but yeah, I, I never sang in front of anybody. But, and I used to go and watch bands play, like high school bands, and I befriended a lot of them. And outside of high school, I would go to a lot of shows and um, befriend all the local artists and stuff. And um, 
Yeah, it's like the guitar player for ended up doing, you know, uh, was a guitar player for Default with me. Um, he, would, he was in one of those bands, and I talked to him about, you know, I, I can sing and love to play guitar and stuff. And I said, like, you should come and play with us, you know? If you love to do it, come and do as, it. And, yeah. As a shy person, one, did, did that thought just, like, give you complete anxiety? Oh, yeah, the whole, yeah, of course. You know, the whole idea. I mean, I was the kid in high school that I would fail science class or whatever class it would be if I had to go do a presentation, you know? I just wouldn't go. It would just, I, I couldn't do it. <laughs> Uh, like yeah it was a nightmare right and um but eventually i got to the point where it's like okay this is such a big part of my life it's always been such a big part of my life i gotta get over this if i got anything in my life i just want to get over this and uh yeah so i had a, a bunch of drinks with the guys on a friday night in the in a garage and we had a little pa system a little monitor system and we just sang some stone temple pilot songs and um nice that was that was sort of my my jumping two feet into it and um and a year later we had a record deal so it was like we started writing songs those songs got into the hands of uh, joey moy when he just came out of recording school and uh we recorded some demos and one of those songs got onto a radio station contest in vancouver uh we won it and we had record labels sort of knocking on our door and coming and watching us play locally in vancouver um and then a year and a half after that we had a platinum record in both U.S. and Canada, so it was like two that's got to be like, it, like that's got to still be surreal. Yeah, yeah, I love telling the story because it's it's just um, there's no direct path into into music and the business. Everybody's got a different story and how it happens for them and how they're discovered and, and their pathway to it. But that yeah, that was mine. That was mine. I I I, I wouldn't. I would be the kid that would fail classes. I didn't want to get up in front of people. And then two and a half years later, I'm. I'm playing arenas with Nickelback. So fronting a band. <laughs> yeah. Front fronting a band. Yeah. What? Yeah. Have you ever yeah. thought about what, you, what would have happened if you just like, didn't try, like didn't overcome that? I, I, I hate to think about it. I hate to think okay. about it. It brought so much joy to my life. Um, and so many great experiences to my life that I'd hate to think of what I would have missed out on. Um, if that's, if this wasn't my path. Yeah. One thing changes like everything. That's so that's that's rad. That's really cool. Yeah. Yep. Do you find when you're standing in like performing, because like there's obviously a difference between being on a stage in front of thousands of people than being in, in your science class in front of 30 people. <laughs> yep. Do you find that like the more people there are, it's just kind of not easier, but it, they all kind of become one or something? Yes. Yes. Very much so. Like that really goes towards like acoustic performances. If we go to a radio station thing and there's five people there, I find that terrifying. It's such an intimate mm. um, experience and like the odds are against you. The chances of like the five of those people don't like you, it's, it's pretty high, you know, but, but if you're playing towards, if you're playing a couple thousand people, you know, there's some people out there that are liking it. So you just focus on that. Right. Yeah. So, and then yeah, people but, who don't like it, you probably can't see. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. They, but they're off getting beer or something. They're doing something. Yeah. Else. Walk them right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so yeah, the less the less intimate it is like that, um, uh, the easier it can be, which is kind of the opposite of what you would think, right? But interesting. But it Very is what it is. Man. Yeah, we just we just play boots and hearts and like uh, twenty twenty five thousand people. And, but if I was to go and do the acoustic thing up at the up at the barn and up on top of the hill there in front of fifty people, it'd be that'd be more nerve wracking for me than anything. <laughs> oh yeah, I I can I I I think I agree with that hundred percent. Weird. That's why especially when, especially when they're all drunk, you can say anything and they're like, woo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. The odds are in your favor for sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. So it's funny because 2012, 2011 comes around and there's this familiar voice suddenly on country radio. And I was, a, I was, I was a teenager. I think I was in, I was still in high school when your first country record came out. We and get I was it. Like, you're young, Jenna. Stop. Sorry. <laughs> We're old, you're young. Yeah, good for you. Uh, <laughs> but I remember being in the car with my dad, huge default fan, and I'm like, who's this? We've heard this before. And my dad's like, I don't I don't know. Because our, our our radio didn't say the name of the song and the who was singing it back then, so you had to wait. Yeah. And so it's like, Dallas Smith. And I'm like, if it gets you where you want to go, Dallas Smith. So we go home, look it up, because our cell phones also didn't have that kind of stuff back then. <laughs> And my dad's like, I recognize him because he's the lead singer of Default. And I was like, what a transition. How do you get from singing like rock music to like, how did, where did the, where did country come into play? And you'd be like, 
when I go solo, I'm going to sing country music. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it goes all the way back to my mom. Uh, she played uh, Reba, Katie Lang, yeah. Kathy Matea, Martina McBride, the Judds. Um, there was like a Garth Greatest Hits. There was an Alan Jackson Greatest Hits. Brooks and Dunn, actually, was probably the most played um, uh, male voices uh, in the country. Uh, Vince Gill. Um, but it, was, it was a lot of female country. And my mom would play uh, CMT. I mean, that was just, uh, uh, you know, just hanging around the house and stuff. It was always around. So um, was it something that I loved as a kid? I was into like, I was into Beatles and Zeppelin and all that kind of stuff, right? But the influence was there. And, and uh, mm. I honestly really think it it, um, it really influenced the default stuff because I, I never really was a, a guy that really loved quirky voices in the rock world. I like traditional, great sounding, good tones that you would normally find a home in, you know, any genre, right? So, um, yeah, so that, that, that influence was pretty huge on me growing up. Uh, I just didn't realize it at the time. And yeah. as, as the as country music evolved, like through the 2000s, early 2000s, um, I found myself listening less to what was going on in rock radio. And like Keith Urban entered the world and mm. Dirk Spentley and Rascal Flatts. And I was like, damn, there's great stuff, really great guitar driven stuff that, that um, with great voices. And so I'd be I'd be uh, well, I'll go I'll, I'll go to this just basically one story. It just kind of started off the country thing is is, you know, I was listening to country music and warming up in the back of the bus. I was Keith Urban Records, and I was, as I was going across, opening up for Three Days Grace with the old band, playing arenas with Three Days Grace. And I'd be warming up to Keith Urban Records in the back of the bus. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, one day in Montreal, it just, it just hit me. Like, it's like the music business will kick your ass. Like, no matter, no matter what you do, no matter how you do it, it's, it's um, yeah. You can it's say a that. Tough road. It's a tough road. But if you're not passionate about what you're doing and you're not loving what you're doing and what you're doing isn't speaking to you and inspiring you to try to inspire other people, you're in the wrong place. So it was very it was a very weird realization that, you know, as a kid I dreamt about opening up playing arenas and doing this stuff and all that stuff going on and what comes with it. And I was unhappy. I was very unhappy. So uh, at that point I had already messaged I could already talked with Joey Moy. Um, producer who had done a lot of the Nickelback records and a lot of stuff that, uh, with the default mm -hmm. guys. Um, I messaged him country record question mark because we had discussed possibly <laughs> going down and doing that and our mutual love for it. And like three weeks later we were down writing with like legends like uh, Craig Wiseman and yeah, all that stuff. Right. And then, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's how it started is that I, I just organically really in the rock world, I just started getting pulled toward that direction and it was never a planned thing. It was never a, uh, uh, you know, you know, uh, trying to connect the dots. How can I can make a career somewhere? It was just like I just followed my heart, and I I knew that um, just want to make a record, and if it worked, it worked. If it didn't, you know, it was on my terms, and and here we go. Um, I tried well, something. It seemed to work. I tried something. Yeah, 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 yeah. So once once Joey and I we recorded that record, and we had those songs, and off the jump right in, I I I. I was inspired again, and I felt like I was where I was, where I belonged after being down in Nashville, you know. And mm. yeah, I still remember that first day when somebody somewhere went for ads to radio, and um, JRFM came in like right away, and that's just the weight of the world was just off my shoulders. It's like, oh my goodness, I get to possibly hear. I'm gonna, I believe in this record. If people hear it, I think they're really gonna like it, and I'm gonna be able to do what I love, be inspired by it, want to inspire other people while while having a career and providing for my family and for my son. So that was, uh, yeah, it was a strange path into country music, but it was a very organic, very natural, um, something that was done on my terms. And, uh, and yeah, yeah, if you I, follow your heart, it just pays off, hopefully. Yeah? I think your debut really helped, you know, bridge some kind of gap in the industry for people to introduce, at a time when, to introduce new people to the country genre. Because people, you know, came obviously recognized your voice and came, you know, we, we saw this, I used to be in radio, I, in the country radio world. And we saw yep. a lot of new fans coming to the genre around that time when, when you broke out. But even now, like people are from the countryside, we're kind of discovering your default music as well. So like at any, at any show that you do, 
there's people screaming back at you any default song you play and any of your songs like yeah it's pretty cool that is yeah, really cool like, like how time. yeah like when you're standing on that stage and like seeing people scream back at you what's that feeling like well i mean with the old stuff like when we we play waste of my time like probably like acoustically most of the time at our shows mm-hmm. um it it really is a like a full circle moment almost every time because there's there's young kids that are 21 17 Dude, they weren't born yet <laughs> they weren't born yet when my when my music career started and my first song got to radio like it's so cool to That's see crazy. them know that song either through your parents like you were saying right um jenna like it's it was uh it's so cool to have like uh like a generation of of fans like literally watch the dots connect from the parents down to the kids and and the familiarity with that song it's it's a it's a very unique experience um and i'm so glad i get to i get to have that i remember my first time seeing you and i'm like does he play default music does he play some of those songs and I think as soon as I heard the beginning of Wasting My Time, I was like texting my parents, like, I'm hearing this song. This is sick. This is sick. And then now, <laughs> like, I, even at the festivals, I love, it's, it's so, it's so wild how, like, this, like, core Canadian rock music has translated so easily into, like, core your country Canadian country career. music. Yeah. yeah <laughs> like, what? Yeah. That's so, so cool. So yeah, cool. it's just as my taste evolves, you know, country radio evolved too, right? Just involving a lot more different influences and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was uh, the timing and, you know, like, like I said, you could have good songs, you could get good whatever, but the, the stars have to align for everything to work. And, um, and luckily they, they aligned and, and were in my favor at that time. Absolutely. That's really, yeah. really cool. I uh, want to talk about a little bit um, when it comes to your investment in emerging artists a mm. couple who have emerged at this rate and i think that's They're fully really cool emerged. because you were, yeah yeah um but i remember seeing a tour i think it was the friends don't drink alone tour yep and i may have and i may have seen mackenzie porter before that every time i've seen her she always credits you and always says i wouldn't have a record deal without dallas smith and there's also this awesome. path of emerging artists right behind her and Sean Austin, who has also emerged, and Andrew Hyatt, who has emerged, and they all have these like wonderful things to say about you as a mentor, not just like, mm. you know, somebody they look up to. So obviously your investment in emerging musicians is very impactful. And I think like where has that been something that you wanted to dedicate your time? Yeah, I think it goes back to how I was yeah, it goes back to how I how I was discovered. It was um, you know, Joey Moy took that demo and brought it to Chad Kruger and he had a real big passion into like um helping younger artists then too and and that band taking us out on tour back in the day like they were mentors to us um they were they were mentors to me uh, personally and still are um so when you when you have the opportunity to pass some of that stuff down um and return the favor and uh be a part of somebody else's discovery and development and i mean it just brings me back to that exciting time for me uh, it's such a great thing to be involved in and um yeah, I, I, I've learned, I, I completely ignored the music business side of, of um, the music business in my default days um, to a fault, right? We just didn't have our eye on the ball, right? And, um, mm. we, got, we got victimized a couple times by certain things, you know, through that. And so I really, really, like when we released, when I released my first country record, I, that, I was really focused on that as well, you know, and it really paid off, you know, uh, making sure the label was doing what they said they were going to be doing and um, holding people accountable on the business side because, you know, you get a lot of, uh, <clears throat> you get a lot of what they think you want to hear in this business and, um, well, they just straight up just don't tell you the truth. Right. So it was really, uh, keeping my eye on that. And, and also through that, it was just, I felt inspired. Like as soon as these artists started poking up, like love voices that I loved, um, I was like, I want to, I want to help this guy. I want to be part of this person's career. So yeah. So we, my partner and I, Scott uh, Cook, I'm a business partner. We, we, form this label and um sign sean send a couple other artists but part of my deal with going over to big loud um with this record deal my last one um was that my label came with it and my artists come with it so Smart. now uh, my label local hay is now um under the big loud umbrella and with the same producers same teams um which 
is such a benefit, uh, such a benefit for me, but, uh, but it's, it's a huge, a huge intro for them into the music business in a, in a safe environment, you know, with a safe deal. And, um, yeah, so it's, it's been exciting. I mean, we signed, we're, we signed another artist, Brock Phillips. Um, he's a local kid. You'll be hearing lots of him. The writers down in Nashville just love him. So it's really exciting to, it's a hard nut to crack to get the creative down here to like you and accept you, right? So, I mean, really, really excited for him. <clears throat> he's got like a, a booming Kings of Leon voice. Like it is, is, is a, oh, yeah, like a master, master at emoting. Like he's just, he's so good. He's a great writer. So I'm, I'm really excited that on the horizon for him in the new year. Um, as he's putting together his uh, his project, and we'll be introducing him. Um, and then there's a, another Canadian artist. We haven't we're right down to the fine print, so I don't want to say the name and jinx it. But um, another female artist that we're going to be working with here, hopefully soon, and and um, running her through the Big Loud building and the writers and um, watching her career develop. And yeah, I'm super excited to be a part of that. And hopefully, fingers crossed. And and um, yeah, it's it's really. Uh, yeah, it's it's a, a really rewarding um, process uh, to be a part of. No kidding. What's your relationship yeah. with the business side now? Then that you've kind of you went from like I'm not I'm not doing this to I have to do this to I want to help make sure others. Yeah, I, I just don't. I, I just don't take shit. I don't take lies. I don't take. I I can smell BS, right? I I get things done myself, right? And uh, hold people yeah. account accountable around me and and hold myself accountable. So. Um, yeah. Yeah. The business that, can yeah. walk all over you. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say, that's great. Cause this business, if you're not, if you're not looking out or have someone else looking out for you, it'll eat you alive. It takes no prisoners. It just does not. Yeah. Wow. Um, that's so inspiring. <laughs> it'll eat yeah, you alive. <laughs> it, it, it's, it, it's all, it's all fun. It's all positive. Right. I and mean, obviously there's some tough conversations that have to be had, but you know, I'm, 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 I'm happy that they come from, a place of uh, genuine concern and just genuine, like wanting to help. Right. And, yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That makes sense. Um, this feels like a great time. Cause you were saying you don't take shit. You also don't take shit on the internet and we send screenshots of your Twitter back and forth. <laughs> Sometimes we're like, we're like, did you see this? <laughs> he said what we're thinking. <laughs> my, <laughs> my yeah. favorite. Yeah. What is your, yeah. what is your, your relationship with social media? Like, because you're quite active, especially on Twitter or X or whatever the hell it's called. Yeah, I, I just, I just, I don't, I don't like the. Oh, I don't want to say this because it might affect me norm, like it might affect me negatively or my career. It's like, man, if you don't, if you don't stand up for what you believe in and be vocal about it, you're speaking to no one. Like, mm -hmm. like, you know, I have, um, I, I see a lot of, I see a lot of artists who have a have a great moral compass, but you don't see it. You know, just kind of along for it and afraid to say anything about something, right? I think I think we're lacking lacking that, um, but it's but it's but it's also you know I say that I say that as an artist who's been around for a long long time and um, I've accepted that I, I'm I'm good with doing this on my terms. So I, I also see the other side of that is when you've been working your entire career or your entire childhood to, to be putting out a record, you don't want to say anything dumb mm -hmm. to get in the way of that. So there is the other side of that, but I, but I like encourage artists who have been around for a while and who have a footing and have a fan base. It's like, if you're thinking it, they're probably thinking it too, because you, you attract people like that are like-minded for the most part and, and, and get a sense, especially when you share your family and stuff, like you're attracting people that have the same sort of moral compass and the same life path, you know, what, 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 what's attracting them to your music. So, um, I'm not afraid to speak up for people that I need feel need to be spoken to and um, country music genre has been known to be a little more close-minded um, in the past it's definitely getting better and I, I hopefully I'm a small part of that wave that's um, bringing more positive voices to the, to the you know to light especially as a Canadian right we have a certain mindset we have a certain connection with helping each other and um, you know uh, growing as a society and helping lift each other up right um, so it's important to me to, to, to bring a bit of that to my world and to wherever my music takes me. What's the importance of sharing like your family life and the other pieces of you on the internet? Cause some people are like personal life. Nobody's going to know about this, but yeah. you're, you're so open. Your daughters are on the internet. Your son is on the internet, your wife, everybody's like part of this, like part of your thing. 
Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's definitely a conversation that's always happening between my wife and I. Um, what stage of our kids' are lives? We, we obviously I want to keep them um, mm -hmm. protected and away from all of the all of the stuff that can come with that. But um, but it's a very much a big part of my a part of me and part of my music, and it's involved in the lyrics and it's involved in everything that I do. Um, you know, uh, yeah. So I. I I, I don't have a problem with that, um, but it's something that we always keep in check. Like I've never really posted anything about my son, who's now 18, um, just out of respect of um, him and his him and his uh, like his mom. We aren't we aren't together. We've been split since he was one years old, and we had an understanding that whatever I do, we'll just we'll just keep you know keep him away from that, right? And um, uh, so yeah, and but m well, my daughters, when I can have a little bit more, you know agreement with my wife and we we the boundaries and what we're wanting to share and what we're not wanting to share you know that's um that's a conversation that's that's had on a you know on a weekly basis as far as what we're doing um yeah it's it's, it's so much a part of me that um i share a little bit of it for sure yeah what's it like yeah. coming home after a trip like you're not home right now you're in nashville going home yeah. and the girls just running to the door you're like this is why i do what i do yeah, it's um, it's gotten easier over the years. Uh, this trip is a lot longer than what I'm normally comfortable with, but with the record release and different opportunities, um, it just had to happen this way. So, but as the kids get older, it's it's easier. So, like my daughter came out to Edmonton while we we're doing a project out there, uh, so she got to enjoy some of the project with me and and um, yeah, experienced a little bit of that with with dad and. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely gotten easier than it was, you know, when my son was real little, when there was no Zoom and there was no nothing, right? Mm. It was it was very difficult, and I was gone for weeks on end, and come back, and you know, I look back on that with with uh, uh, with mixed feelings for sure, because I know that I, I had to be out there and doing something to provide and move my my family's future forward, and but yeah, there was a lot of sacrifices back in the day, and. And I missed out a lot, a lot of the, those years of my son's life, um, just because of circumstances and stuff. But him and I, sure. we live super close and always been super close. And it's the reason I never went down to Nashville and moved, is because um, mm. I was always I was always able to uh, drive my son to school in the morning. And when I came back from tour, I wasn't coming back to Nashville and then having to fly up to visit my son. I, I would never have been able to sleep at night, and therefore it never would have worked for my career. So I realized that right away and. So I was, yeah, born in New Westminster, BC. I grew up in Langley, and I still live there. And I will, I will never, ever, ever move. <laughs> that's that's uh, that's really important too, because you know there, are, like musicians are having to make sacrifice and compromise all the time. So it, it's yeah. nice that you you drew your line, and this is what I'm not willing to do, and that's really important. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I started oh, my yeah. I started my fam I started my family in Langley. I started my family in Canada, and. And it's, um, that's where I, I, I saw and wanted my family to grow up in and be raised in. And, and that no other career thing is going to pull me away from that. You know, I understand that, that music is only a part of my life. Yeah. That's so healthy. Holy shit. Yeah. I was going to say like, like, that sounds like a really great mental health. <laughs> uh, yeah. Space. Yeah. But, but also, I, but also I say, I say that as somebody who's been around in the business for a long time from that point. Right. So it was, yeah. uh, I was, I was able to have that sort of. Uh, understanding about myself and understanding, right? But when you're young, you you get pulled down and do something in the opportunity, and, you know. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, it was just my circumstance, right? And I, I just uh, it just wasn't going to work for me. For sure. One more note on your kids: Are they yes. musically inclined? Or right. is anybody mm -hmm. picking up instruments? Is your youngest child does, does she have the dexterity already, or what? <laughs> yeah. Are, my, are you train, Are you building up your own backing band here? <laughs> no, I am not. No, I am not. I am. Uh, I have been always somebody, somebody that if they are interested in it, then I will definitely help them chase it down. Um, but I always, I always talk about this story. I got this really nice guitar from Australia from one of the tours that we did back in the day. Um, yeah, early two thousands and brought it home. It was one of my favorite acoustic guitars. And the only time my son ever picked it up was when he was like four and he took a ballpoint pen to it and right down the, right down the whole face of it. But uh -huh. it's, uh, it's one of my favorite guitars. Cause every time I look at that guitar, I always think of, of him and, and that moment. And, um, yeah. So the answer, the answer to that <laughs> one is, is no, I, I, I've heard him like sing and, and hum and stuff like that, do different things and stuff. Right. There's definitely something there, but he's, he's, you know, cars and girls and, and all that stuff, right? Sports and 
Yeah, yeah. Vita, Vita, <laughs> Vita definitely has a, a bit more of an expressive musical sort of thing going on. Um, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not forcing anything on, on anybody right now. That's important too, I think, <laughs> yeah. because we're all sitting yeah. here like, so are you forcing them to go to music lessons? And no, like, no, it's just kids be kids, yeah. man, and let, their, let, them, let them follow their passion. If, if I can inspire them to, to, to follow that, uh, that road, then, then so be it, you know? But I'm definitely not going to encourage anybody to go in the music business, that's for sure. <laughs> not anybody that I care about. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. That's, yes. That is fair. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, bef- yeah. before we talk about your new album, I wanted to give time to the Lifted organization. You're a huge yeah. advocate for mental health. So why don't you started yep. that in 2021, I want to say? Yeah, yeah, we were talking about it a bit pre-pandemic and, and we really yep. had the time to, to focus and, and build something um, during the pandemic, yeah. I can't imagine yeah, why. So was, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've, um, I've been open about my mental health uh, struggles and stuff throughout my years and um, I'm very open about it. Um, it's, it's a day-to-day thing. It's something that, um, that, is, that is dealt with on a daily basis and um, sometimes I'm really good at it and sometimes I'm not. Um, you know, at, at, at keeping a check on what's going on in my head and, you know, making sure that I'm taking care of myself as long, as well as, um, you know, doing everything I need to do in life and want to do in life. So, um, but I, yeah, and, and especially during the pandemic and watching kids go through that through their eyes through, um, and seeing the lack of help that's out there, um, it's getting better. But it's it's something that uh, yeah, I really want to direct attention to and continue to direct attention to is the access to uh, mental health programs for youth, and um, uh, it is it is a life changing opportunity for kids to have something to educate themselves on, and and the, the help that's available out there, and try to increase that and point them in the right direction, and fund all those different programs that bring that to, to kids. And um, we we go a bit beyond um, the mental health stuff. Like we we raised money, and we were able to send. Um, we bought um, this guy in a hospital. Uh, he was making. Um, uh, these special pedals and special shoes so kids with disabilities could ride bikes and do oh, different cool. things like that. And he could only make a certain amount of them per year. And then the need, he never, never could feed, uh, fill the need. And uh, so we heard about his story and we bought him a 3D printer and now he pumps out as many as he can. And, and there's that many more kids that are, um, wow. I mean, it's just simple things like that. What, what does that do for a kid? That, I mean, we know yeah, what it changes it's like their lives. and that freedom and your control of where you're going and stuff. Like, to have that as a as a kid, um, yeah, that you shouldn't that, that should be available to every kid, and so I'm glad to be a little part of that and help that help that great guy do what he's doing and make it more efficient. Yeah, that's really great. That yeah, is- I mean, yeah, it's easy. It's easy, you know, and you got mm-hmm. the platform to do it. It's easy. It's a lot of fun. It's enjoyable. It brings a lot to your soul. It's it's just great. It's a great thing to do. Well, Absolutely, it, it's very admirable. Um, and I don't know how to transition from that to <laughs> the album, <laughs> but, uh, well, hopefully the album. it's a good album and it takes me a lot of places and I can hope spread some of that more. Right. That's, um, that's yeah. So your, your self-titled album, Dallas Smith came out just this past, past week. Um, yep. you know, first of all, of all, I want to ask, what is the process of, of naming a record and why did it take so many records to get to Dallas Smith? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's a maturing process. I think it. I think it's just um, it's this this journey that I've taken over the last twenty three years. Um, it's really been a lot. It's been a big learning process as a human being. Like seeing what I've seen. Um, like I've I've seen some crazy stuff. I toured a military hospital in the middle of Afghanistan and seen, you know, what kids kids don't have in other areas. You know, and. Um, yeah, and just yeah, I mean, just all the crazy stuff that I've I've seen and been a part of and experienced from touring and uh, people from different countries, different walks of life, uh, different you know opportunities and lack of opportunities, and um, it's kind of brought me to this place where I recognize the opportunity that I have. I feel like I'm in a very good place. I feel like I'm proud of what I bring to the table. Um, yeah, I think it's just like the most I've been comfortable in my own skin um and then to have you know a, my first u.s focused release and you know pushing in some other global markets and 
I think that was a really good time for like a reintroduction to who I am and what I want to achieve. It's not just about about the record and about the music and the songs. It's a whole it's a whole thing that I feel like as a whole I'm in a really good place um, that I'm that I'm proud of and. And it felt like a really, yeah, like I said, it felt like a really good time to just go, you know what, there's not like one particular song that really speaks to me. This is like a whole project and, and it's mm. not just about a song, it's about me um, as a person and as an artist. And it was a great opportunity to, to like for a re- reintroduction. And he- here I am at this moment in my life. That's and that's kind of like, goes with the, uh, it goes with the, and even the album cover represents that journey. I mean, that centerpiece of the, where I'm standing on the road, that's Music mm-hmm. Row. Um, right in right. front of Big Loud, which is my home, mm-hmm. and uh, and then the background is the Fraser River, right across from, um, yeah, the the this is a birthplace of BC. It's where the, the fort is in Fort Langley. It's my where I grew up, and um, across the river there is the uh, the, uh, the Indigenous Reserve. All the kids that I went to high school with and the school with, and it's uh, yeah, it's it's a really special place to me and where I come from and what represents a lot of me. And then where cool. where it's taken me to, yeah. Cool. So as an industry, we've largely gotten away from putting out full albums, uh, or at least a lot of artists have. Um, but you're still yeah. doing that, and and your last few projects have been full albums. Um, yeah. What are your like w- when you're building an album and looking for the perfect songs to put on it? Um, yep. What about a song when you're listening to songs that that gets you to choose that song to be part of your next project? It has to check a lot of boxes. I mean, it has to speak to me. Um, it has to like melodically make me feel a certain emotion. Um, but at the end of the day, the project is 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 something that's got to represent me and all all the influences and all the topics and all the things that that that, uh, that I want to rep- represent um, in my art. And uh, I think ultimately, like my favorite records were the ones that uh, the ones that no matter what mood I was in. I would always go to the same record, just a different song. I mean, that mm-hmm. artist spoke to me and like gave me something for everything, you know? And so I'm very meticulous in making sure that we have all the boxes checked for me um, and what I would look for in a record and all the different emotions that I experience. And I, tr- I try to make a record for a person, somebody like that, somebody that's looking for that and appreciates that. Um, so yeah, it's like when we released, um, fixer upper very very progressive new country sounding um song but i also wanted to release at the same time the complete opposite influence that that i have um from country music and crzy which is like very based in traditional um country and storytelling um so i want yeah i want i want a record that hits both sides of that expands the palette that i can use and ultimately this is the type of songs and the palette that i can draw from for the live show where where hopefully, you know, you hear a song that that reminds you of a certain memory with a different uh, emotion and experience, and then all of a sudden the next one inspires you to drink a beer and give your buddy a high five and drive fast, right? I mean, that's that's really important to me to have that that palette and that well-rounded record, um, which speaks to why it took three years since the last record and while we trickled out a few songs. It's like, that song's ready, that song's to that box. We don't have the full project, but now in the digital world, we can release that instead of waiting mm-hmm. the full three years. And going right, so I think that's that's really the benefit. There's a, a benefit to that, and um, if you can if you can get a, enough material, um, you feel strong enough about a record. That's great. I mean, that's killer. Ultimately, that's the goal. Love it. Amazing. Yeah. Um, so, me being selfish and wanting to know for my benefit, because I am the listener yep. who I list the first three times I listen to an album, it's like top to bottom, and then I start to pick out my favorites. Mm-hmm. As a person who who is that who likes to go back to an album. And like, I'm feeling a certain way. I'm listening to this today and I'm going to go to this particular song because I'm in a good mood versus like, I'm having a slow day. Mm-hmm. What's, what's that song on this album that you think is something that feels like enough old school Dallas Smith, but still like really fresh? Hmm. I think uh, the lead off track. Yeah. Excuse me. I love that song. Yeah. yeah, I think that's my favorite song off the album. I mean, I've only listened to it a couple times now, but I yep. I really like that one. Yeah, I'm hearing that. I'm hearing that quite a bit, which is which is good because I fought for that song hard to stay on the record. It almost got bumped a couple times, 
But really? uh, there's a few of us that were just like, nah, there's something special about this one. I think it's really going to turn out great. And there's a little bit of a darkness to it. Um, uh, yeah, it, it almost felt like a little bit of like a country with a little tinge of Fleetwood Mac in there, um, which which uh, which really attracted me to the song. And uh, yeah, so it, was, it was a song that almost got booted off the record and it ended up being the lead off track, which is like it's so cool. Is that on purpose? <laughs> Yeah. Is no, that on purpose? Because no. you're like, we had to fight for this, so it's going first. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Hey, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and I and I, yeah. I'll be the first to admit it, right? I mean, you gotta be your own worst worst critic, right? And and um, but but just yeah, it's, it's it's a great feeling to know that there's something that spoke to that song, and then nobody argued with it putting it in the front of the record. Like it was like, oh yeah, no, I get it. Interesting. That's a, a great lead off track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, a song called um, "How Do You Miss Me" is another one that I just uh, I think uh, there's something special about that one. It's a very, very that, unique message. Yeah. That was the first one that stuck out for me too. And I want to say that one for me was reminiscent a little bit of um, the EP that came out before. Sorry, I'm obviously an OG fan here being like back in the day, Dallas Smith. But I I, like, <laughs> I forget what the EP was called, but um, it was... There was a song. Okay, there was a song called "Wrong About That," and you've never, yep. I've never heard it live ever. Oh, that, was, that one should have been a single. That one should have been a single. I literally <laughs> was obsessed with that song. If you ask my best friend, who I also dragged into front working out with us at Front Porch a few years ago, if I said, "Meg, what's my favorite Dallas Smith song?" She'd be like, "Wrong About That." And that, really? how for some reason, "How Do You Miss Me" was like, oh, "I miss Wrong About That." And I would go like yesterday when I first listened to the album. I went back and I listened to Wrong About That. I was like, yes, nice. I don't know why. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, there's something special about that song, too. When we played it live, there was something special about that one. Um, yeah. It stood out. It should have been a single. But, yeah. you know, it is what it is. But in, in um, maybe I'll start putting that one back in the set list because that that's definitely one that I missed as well. Yeah. If you, Jenna, if this you, one's for you. If you kindly make an announcement, <laughs> I'll be ahead of it. I'll All right. Be let me know what show you're going to be at. I'll make sure it's in the set <laughs> Okay. <laughs> this is our, our whole reason of having you on the podcast. Yeah, just so I can corner you. <laughs> request, yeah. <laughs> well, Dallas, th- we're coming up to the end here. Um, thank you so much for joining us on our season finale uh, of On the Porch. Uh, really appreciate you taking the time. Well, that was uh, that flew by. That was 40, 40 something minutes. Man, that was, yeah, that I know. Was, that was the quickest feeling 40 minutes I've had in a long time. So that was a great conversation. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, and congratulations on the new album. Yeah, congrats. Thank you. Thank you. It feels good. This is a great, great time to watch people discover the songs. I, I, I love it. Like just hearing the story of which song you guys both love. I mean, that's that's like great information and, and feels good to, to sort of be validated on which songs I, I kind of, you know, was attracted to as well. So it's great. Amazing. Amazing. We'll see you okay. out on the road. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Just let me know when you're going to be there and I'll throw it in the set. Don't worry. I'll be, I'll be, more, I'll be more than happy to because I missed that song too. So. Just let me know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) You just made Jenna's day. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks guys. Great talking with you. Thanks for listening to another episode of on the porch with front porch music. We're so lucky to be able to chat with artists and make episodes like this one. If you like the podcast, remember to rate and review us and subscribe. So you don't miss an episode. It's the easiest way to support the show. Remember to check out frontporchmusic.ca to keep up with new music releases, exclusive artist interviews, and more. We'll catch you again on The Porch in a couple of weeks. On The Porch is hosted by Logan Miller and Jenna Weiser, and produced and edited by Jason Saunders. That's me. Our theme song was written, produced, and performed by Owen Rigland.